Today's Namaste Yoga is an absolute beginner's class. Hello and welcome to episode 268 of Namaste Yoga. I'm here with a real life person <laughs> this week. This is my very good friend, <laughs> Tara, <laughs> who agreed to be with me today to help you all out with the beginner class. So I'm incredibly grateful for her to be here. And <laughs> I owe her big time. So thank you so much, Tara, for being with us. And thank you to Squeezed for our clothes. Tara and I are both wearing Squeezed clothes today so I'm wearing a oh this has a really cool name this purple color but I'm it eludes me right now I'm wearing a flying heart top and I'm wearing long navy uh, leggings and Tara's wearing black leggings and she's wearing a bamboo top and uh, brick red I believe so we're both wearing all squeeze today and uh, it's great because it stays put and you can just do your yoga and not even think anything about it and then thanks to um, a dusky leaf <laughs> for our props. I've got, uh, we're going to be using a lot of them today, but if this is your first time use, doing yoga, you can always use things that you have around your house. So we're going to be using a strap for our legs today, but you can use a tie from your bathrobe. We're going to be using blocks, but you could use a chair or you could use some uh, almond milk box. Yep. Awesome. I love having an assistant on the set. Uh, we're going to use a wall for uh, legs up the wall. It'd be good to have a wall or a tree. We're going to, you could use a chair or a wall for balance. So use what's around you. You don't have to have anything super special, especially because you are starting out. I have a testimonial today from Rowena. She actually wrote a whole blog post about her experience with Namaste Yoga. And the blog post goes, Melissa West is a yoga teacher. I have never met her, but she has hundreds of beautiful yoga videos available on YouTube for free. Her yoga is for real people with real bodies. So people like me with a blown knee can do it. And people who like me who aren't skinny all over and smooth bodied and smooth faced can do it too. And if you are a person like me and you do Melissa's yoga, you will soon know again that your lumps and bumps and squishiness are perfect and beautiful and as deserving of a nice swimsuit as anybody else's. <laughs> I love this testimonial. But really, Melissa's yoga is about real life too. Yoga for courage to apply for the job and attend the job interview, or to ask for help to acknowledge a mistake. Yoga for grieving, to say goodbye to feel it, really feel it, and let it be for a bit or even to let it go. Yoga for going inwards and remaining strong when the world shouts that you are too old, too wrinkly, too fat, and not enough of this and this and that. And yoga for having to go and try your hardest and collapsing in a heap, a giggling heap, laughing your head off as you realize that some big drama in your life is not such a big bloody deal after all. This is like the best testimonial I've ever received. <laughs> well, it was a blog post, but I had to share it as a testimonial. That was my favorite yoga moment. Or maybe my favorite yoga moment was when I did a twist and grasped my wonky knee and was encouraged by Melissa's philosophy, was gentle with it and placed it just so and felt a real rush of love and admiration for my bony old knee and all we have been through together and gave it a little pat. There, there, old girl. That was nice too. But maybe the best bit is that it is those moments that keep me coming back. Not the weight loss, age reversal, or the general yoga aerobics crap. <laughs> Just me, loving me, and the body I'm in. Thank you. So, 
I think that maybe is the best testimonial that I've ever read. So I thought that was great. I thought it was a good one to read on an absolute beginner's class so you can know a little bit more about what we're about. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a little bit about some things you should think about before you start, and then we're going to give you a preview of our whole class. Okay, so one of the first things to think about when you're starting yoga, and this we put on our top 10 tips to do before you take your first yoga class, which we'll probably link to in our show notes, is if you have any health conditions or injuries, uh, to think about those before you do your first yoga class and potentially even go to your medical doctor before you take your first yoga class. So Tara and I had a conversation before the class, before we turned on the video camera, and she doesn't have any injuries and she has some intestinal issues. So I asked her if there are any yoga poses that make it worse and actually there weren't any. So I was... I was a little surprised by that. So there isn't anything that she needs to avoid. And uh, so any movements that make it worse, then you would want to avoid those. Um, and then if there was anything that made it better, and she wasn't aware of that either. So if you have any injuries or any major health conditions, then go to your doctor and ask your medical doctor if there's anything that I need to avoid to make making it worse and anything that I can do to make it better or anything specific to my health condition that I should know about exercising and then bring that with you to your class so you know what you should and shouldn't do and how to best take care of yourself in a yoga class or in a movement class. And make sure to ask them about movement because not all doctors will know about every kind of yoga. Now the next thing that we want to do, because this is an absolute beginner class and you've never done, you maybe potentially have never done yoga before, is give you a preview of the entire class so you know what's coming and you can just relax and enjoy the class. So Tara's going to show you everything that's going to happen in this class. So it's going to start with you lying down on your back. And then I'm going to take you through some guided relaxations. And then after that, you're going to be doing a keyhole stretch. So you, yep. And then after that, you're going to be doing a stretch for the backs of your legs with the, with the strap. And we're gonna be doing this really slow with lots of step-by-step -step instructions. After that, you're gonna be coming up onto all fours and doing something called a cat stretch. We'll be giving lots of modifications for your wrists and your knees throughout. So you'll be rounding up through your back and arching your back in this position. And after that, you're going to be doing lunge pose. And we'll be showing you lots of ways to take care of your knees in this pose. And after lunge pose, we'll be doing downward facing dog. And I'm going to be actually showing a modification against the wall as well. Okay, after downward facing dog, we'll be coming all the way up to standing. And we're gonna do, be doing a pose where you just stand and it's called Tadasana. And then we'll be doing a balancing posture called tree pose. And we'll be giving you lots of tips and ways to help you with your balance using a chair or a wall. And then we'll be doing legs up the wall. I forgot to show you this one, but you know how to do that one. <laughs> Yeah, and then we're going to be doing bridge pose. Starting to feel like this plan is kind of ambitious. <laughs> Great. And then we're going to be doing uh, sitting up, and you're going to be doing that twist I showed you. It's called Marici's twist. Yeah. And then we're going to be doing a simple seated forward fold with the leg open, Janu Sarsasana. Yeah. And then you're going to finish lying down on your back again. So that's it. That's all that's going to be happening here. So I'll get you to stay lying on your back because <laughs> that's how we're going to start. So uh, just a few instructions on how to lie on your back because this is a beginner's class. So Tara's neck is nice and flat to the ground. So sometimes people's um, chins are way above their, yes, thank you, are way above their forehead in which case you could 
put a blanket underneath your head if that was the case, just so that your chin was on the same level as your forehead. But actually when, when Tara does that, you see how it really tucks her chin, so that doesn't work very well at all for her. So she's better to have uh, no, no pillow. She, Tara's part of the no pillow sleeping revolution now. It's working really well for her neck alignment. And then another thing you might want to do is just, I, I really like to just tuck my shoulder blades under a little bit. It just helps to, does that feel like the, see how her shoulders just really dropped when she did that towards the ground a little bit more. Does that feel like that dropped your shoulders, relax them towards the ground a little more? Yeah. Um, if you have any low back issues, a nice thing to do is to bend your knees and have your feet flat on the floor. You might find that takes the pressure off. And a thing that Tara just did there when she did that was she pressed into her feet, which lifted her tailbone. So can you do that really obviously? Yeah, see how her back was arched there? So she pressed into her feet. She tucked her tailbone and lifted it, which lengthened her low back. It might be enough just to do that and then lengthen your legs out again. Yeah. But if you do have low back issues, you can either keep your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor or put a rolled up blanket. Or if you do already have props, which you're a beginner, I, I kind of wouldn't expect you to have. You could always put a bolster underneath your knees, which creates real ease in your low back. So you choose a starting position for you. Generally, your palms are turned out beside you because it allows your shoulders to rest and open a little bit more and have a little more space in your chest. And if you're cold, you can always put a blanket over you. So that's how to lie on your back. And now you're going to... Stay there? You're going to stay, yeah. <laughs> See, this is good. <laughs> you're going to stay. <laughs> and we're going to focus on your breathing for a little bit. And, and relax into the ground. So this is gonna be a guided relaxation just to change your transition from the busyness of, of your day-to-day -day life so that you can have uh, the singular focus of a yoga practice and focus inward now. Okay, so take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And you can take as many breaths like that as you need to arrive here now. And when it feels like you've landed, you can go to breathing in and out through your nose. And then let your attention go to your breathing. Follow your breath as you breathe in and follow your breath as you breathe out without needing to fix or change it in any way. Just notice where you feel your breath in your body. And now shift your attention so that you're paying attention to the ground underneath you. So notice all the parts of your body that are touching the ground. And each time you breathe out, allow your body to sink into the ground underneath you a little bit more. So those points of contact on the ground between your body and the ground become even more.
Okay, so from here, you're going to take a deep breath in through your nose. Let it fall out of your mouth. And then bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. Okay. Now take your right ankle and cross it over the top of your left thigh and open your right knee all the way out to the side. And then draw both legs in towards your chest. And good, I like how Tara's holding on behind her left knee. And that's really good if you have any knee issues because you're not going to um, bother that knee joint at all if you're doing it that way. Also, fully bend your left knee. Yeah, so one thing I see a lot of people do in this pose is that, <laughs> which if you have any knee issues can be hard on the joint. So keeping your hands behind the knees, so demonstrate it that way just for people with knee issues. The other thing I see a lot of people do is to straighten that left leg all the way up. And then it just takes the stretch out of your left hip and outer thigh. So just keep that knee fully bent and you'll feel more of, of something happening in your left hip and outer thigh. So also as important as feeling something happening is keeping things not happening in other parts of your body. So make sure that your jaw stays relaxed and make sure your shoulders stay relaxed. I'll let them keep dropping into the ground. So this is a great pose to stretch out your hips. Now, if you're pregnant, you can't lie on your back after the first trimester. So then a nice, um, a nice alternative to that is pigeon pose where you would come up here and have space for your belly like in the in this position um, another thing you can do is always make space just make space in in your pose for your for your body so in this particular pose if you're running into an issue with space here for your belly then just back off a little bit lift and move the flesh out of the way and then draw your legs back in. Okay, so we're gonna switch sides on this pose. And you're gonna cross your, oh, I already, <laughs> I was doing the wrong side. So you're gonna cross your left ankle over the top of your right thigh and really open your left knee out to the side and then slowly draw your legs in towards your torso. You're gonna reach through and hold on behind your leg, your right leg. And you're gonna find that just right spot between too much and too little so you feel something happening in the outside of your left hip. So I was explaining the wrong hip, what something was happening on the other side, I apologize. and relax your shoulders. Make sure there's space between your teeth so your jaw is relaxed. Okay, so um, a couple of options in this pose if drawing your leg is in isn't possible. One is to keep your leg on the ground. The other is to use the strap. Yep, you have yours right there, right? So you can take the strap and put it behind your leg. And if you can't reach, then you can use your strap to draw your leg in. And then Tara had a great idea of using the wall as well. 
So I'm going to get up so you can demonstrate that properly. Yeah, so lots of options here if you can't reach that your leg to draw it in. And if you need more options, leave me a comment in the comments box and we can give you more options as well. We'll come up with more ideas. Let us know what the limitation is and we'll come up with more options for you. Okay, so then our next pose is we're going to stretch out your the back of your leg. With In yoga, it's called supt padangustasan, which is called hand to big toe pose. And we're going to create a nice modification using the strap. So contraindications to this, that means you shouldn't be doing it if you have a hamstring tear. Um, if you're uh, if you ha are pregnant, then you don't want to be lying flat on your back for this one. So let's go over. A, so Tara went right into that just like a pro. Let's go, <laughs> let's go into the steps here. One thing about using the strap, you want to put it right around the ball of your foot joint. That's the safest place to put it around your foot. And you've got it on your right leg right now. So you're going to bend your left leg. And this, it makes it uh, not a straight leg forward bend if you have back issues. So that is keeps it a little safer for people with back issues. And then also the other thing you can do is you don't have to have your extended leg absolutely straight. So you could, yeah, you can back it off quite, quite a bit. So Tara's actually quite flexible. So just go to the point where you feel something happening on the back of your leg. If you're feeling it, you're doing it. And uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. It matters what it feels like. And then relax your shoulders down as much as possible. You've got that whole strap, so you can use the length of your whole strap. You don't have to be having your hand way up by your foot. Yeah, that's really nice. If your elbows can rest on the ground and you have your hands back down by your body as well. And breathe. And if you have high blood pressure or uh, really tight thoracic spine, you can also put a folded blanket under your head for this one. You can just you can just relax for that, Terry. You're good. Yeah. So when you first start taking yoga, it becomes really apparent how tight your hamstrings are <laughs> because a lot of the poses ask for your hamstrings to be. Uh, quite flexible. So this is a great pose to practice at the beginning of practicing yoga. Okay, so we're going to switch feet. I'll get you to switch your strap and put the strap around the ball of your left foot now. Okay, so again, just check in with the white knuckle syndrome on the strap. Relax your hands and bring, use the whole length of the strap and bring your elbows right down. Relax your shoulders down to the floor. Yeah, great. So as important as what muscles are getting stretched or what muscles are engaged are, are making sure that everything else is not Active. So your shoulders don't need to be involved in this. Your jaw doesn't need to be involved in this. Just, just your hamstrings. Okay, so now you can let go of that pose, find a way to let that out of your body, and then put your strap to the side, bend your knees, roll to your right side, and come up onto all fours. So when you come up onto all fours, we're going to do that cat pose, and here you have to be careful of your wrist. This is the one, if you have carpal tunnel syndrome, that's going to be an issue. So I'm going to show you a few options for your wrist. So what we're going to be doing here for everybody who's okay with the wrist, you're going to be exhaling and rounding up through your back and then inhaling and arching through your back. 
Okay, so one thing that I'm just gonna notice in Tara's body is you wanna turn your elbow creases so they face each other. Fa face each other. You've been taught face forward. You were taught face forward. Yeah, face each other. So turn the elbow creases so they face each other. That'll give you a really stable shoulder girdle. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, bend them just a little bit. Yeah. Which feels maybe a little weird in your body. Okay. And then exhale round and inhale arch. And then we're going to do a few things, options for your wrists so that if you have a uh, wrist that gets sore from this, which they will at the beginning until they, you build up strength. So one is you can come up onto your fists. So make fists, yeah, and then you're gonna have to reset your elbow creases so they face each other again, like their eyes looking at each other, yeah. And also, yours go a little bit forward of your shoulders too, so bring your hands right underneath your shoulders so they come back a bit, yeah. Good. And exhale, round and arch. So that's one option. Another option for wrists is to come down onto your forearms. Yeah, very nice. And you can exhale round there and arch there, and that's a really nice option. Um, it also kind of targets a different part of your spine. Do you feel that? Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. And when you do that, and this is really nice as you um, get more and more advanced in yoga, you want to really make sure that your elbows and wrists are equal distance apart. That will help you prepare for your um, arm balances and things as you get really strong. That's yang yoga. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. So that's really great for your spinal flexibility, which will help your whole nervous system, all kinds of things. Now we're going to come into lunge pose. So from here, we're going to walk one leg forward. Yep. Great. And you want to really connect with your front foot, your whole front foot on the ground. So feel, Feel the ball of your big toe ball joint behind your little baby toe, the whole front of your heel and your back of your heel. So you feel all four corners of your feet. And I like how both of us are up on our fingertips. That's nice for our wrists. And also feel the back of your shin, your shin at your back. Now for knees, there's a couple of things you can do because it may be that the that you feel the ground is a little too hard here. So one thing you can do is put a folded blanket underneath your knees. Oops. And that's quite nice to have that extra padding underneath your knees. The other thing is that when you're beginning, it might be that balance is a little bit of an issue. And Tara's nice and close to the wall there, so you can actually just use the wall. Hold on to the wall if, walls, if balance is an issue. That will come. Balance is one of the components of physical fitness. So the more you work on it, the better it will get, the more stable you'll become. Just like strength, flexibility, endurance, cardiovascular, balance will improve as well. OK, so let's switch sides. Take a step back. And you can walk your other leg through between your hands. Great. And a big part of the balance is that you really feel your whole front foot on the ground. If you lift and spread your toes too, that will help to increase your base at the front, which will help you balance as well. So our next pose, I'm going to get you to start on all fours, and then I'll talk them how through to come into it. We'll get rid of that blanket. So spread, bring your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Tuck your toes under, and then inhale. You're going to lift your hips up and reach them back. So this is downward facing dog. Now, in this pose, you have a beautiful downward facing dog. <laughs> you make it look really easy. So a couple of things that you could do if it wasn't as easy for you as it is for Tara is you could bend your knees a lot. Yeah, and see how that gives a really nice lengthening through the spine. And you can also lift your heels a lot more to, 
yeah, lift your heels and bend your knees. And that takes a lot of it out of your um, legs and more into lengthening your spine. So if your hamstrings weren't as lengthened as Tara's, then that's a really nice option there. Okay, so you can come out of this and I'm gonna give another option. Option for wrists would be to come down onto your forearms and do downward facing dog on your forearms. So that takes more upper body strength, but it takes the weight out of your wrists. Um, so that gets rid of the carpal tunnel syndrome uh, contraindication. If you have headaches and high blood pressure, this is not a great pose for you, uh, so don't do it. Um, there is another option that we're gonna show as well. Okay, so the other option, and this is great too, if you are building your upper body strength and you feel like you're not strong enough yet, is to do downward facing dog against the wall. So you spread your fingers against the wall and you bring your body parallel to the ground. So just lift your head a little bit, Tara, so it's in line with your spine, nice. And then your body's parallel to the ground and it's a really nice stretch for your spine. And it takes, that's a nice one if you have headaches too because your head's not hanging down. And it's a nice one if you have wrist issues, there's not so much weight in your wrists. Um, it's just all round less, eh, Tara? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a nice one to build with. Um, really great version of downward facing dog. And it gets all the benefits. Of, it's a really nice stretch through your spine still. So that's a great one. And then uh, we're going to be coming up to standing now anyway. Okay, now we're going to do that pose called Tadasana pose, mountain pose, which is ba basically standing. So you're going to put your feet underneath your hip bones, find that iliac crest, the bony part at the top of your pelvis, and you're going to bring your feet to parallel, find the inner edges of your feet and make them parallel, and then lift and spread your toes, feel all the four corners of your feet. So what that means is behind the big toe ball joint, behind the baby toe ball joint, the front corner of your heel on the inside and the front corner of your heel on the outside. And then reach your legs down into the ground. And when you do that, you'll feel your spine lengthen up. And then relax your arms down, draw your head back over your rib cage. And that's Tadasana pose. So that was pretty simple. And just focus on your breath, breathing in and out. Now we're going to do a balancing posture. So I'm gonna get a chair. So Tara's gonna have that chair beside her so she can use that for balance if she needs to. And you're going to stand on your, and it's gonna be your right foot, our left. And you're gonna turn your left toes out and your knee out. And you're going to uh, focus on something that's not moving. So find a point to focus on. That's gonna help you to balance. And then you can either keep your toes on the ground or you can pick up your foot and place it below or above your knee. So the higher you move your foot up your leg, the more challenging the balance is going to be. And then you bring your hands together and prayer position at your heart center. And if you're using a chair for balance, that's great too. So I'm gonna keep my toes on the ground for today to help me with balance. And again, breathing in and out through your nose here.
And then let this pose out of your body. And this time you're going to stand on your left foot, turn your right toes out and your right knee. And you can either leave your foot on the ground or you can pick it up and bring it below your knee or above your knee. And then bring your hands together at your heart center. And again, you can use a wall or a chair for balance. Whatever works best for you. Focusing on something that's not moving on the ground. Breathing in and out through your nose. And then find a way to let this out of your body. Okay. From here, we're going to, I'm going to use this chair to show an alternative to legs up the wall. But we're going to do legs up the wall. So I'm going to show you a really easy way to get into legs up the wall. You can, why don't you bring your mat so it's perpendicular to the wall. That'll make it a little easier for you. Let me bring it right over there, yeah. Okay, so here is a nice easy way to come into legs at the wall. See how Tara's right at the edge of her mat with her butt right up against the wall with her knees bent like that. That is going to make sure you end up really close to legs at the wall. Now, there are going to be some of you that aren't going to do this pose. If you have glaucoma, you're not going to do this. If you have a back injury such as slip discs, herniated discs, compressed discs, bulging de discs and degenerative disc disease, you're not going to do it either because it kind of works like a straight leg forward fold. So if you've already talked to your doctor and you know that you can't do straight leg forward folds, then this is one of them that's not good. Okay, so once you get into this position, then you're going to swing your legs around and come, yeah, so you just have to kind of scoot yourself around and then you end up pretty close to the wall and your legs come up the wall. And that's about it. And you get to hang out there and that works as your inversion. Move it back a bit. No, it's good. Okay, so now I'm going to show you an alternative if you do have those uh, back issues. So uh, you're going to use a chair and you're going to do legs up the chair instead because then your knees will be bent. And it's nice actually, that's funny, that blanket's right there, to put the blanket over the chair so it's not so hard on the back of your knees. So same thing as Tara did, I'm going to put my butt right against the chair and then I'm going to bring my legs around and I'm going to do legs up the chair instead so I have bent legs. So that's a nice alternative to legs up the wall. And they're both inversions and they're both nice and restorative. So here you can focus on your breath in your belly. Okay, so to come down from legs at the wall, you'll bend your knees and roll to your side. Great, and come on up. And for me, I'm going to just roll to my side and pause and then come up.
And from here, you're going to put your mat back to a normal position. And we're going to lie on your back. Okay, so lie down on your back. Bend your knees, feet flat on the floor. Put your hands down by the side of your body, your palms down. And press into your feet and your, your pelvis will start to lift off the ground until your pelvis lifts off the ground. Okay, and actually see how Tara's knees are actually going a little bit beyond her ankles. So I'm going to actually get her to move her feet a little bit further away from her pelvis. And another really nice thing that you can do, um, so most of you, since you're just starting yoga, probably won't have a block, but you might have a pillow from on your couch. See how her knees are a little wider than her hip bones here? And this is really common because um, just our muscles are a little lazy, to be honest. So use your inner thigh muscles <laughs> and turn, bring your feet in a little. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So we also tend to have a little bit skewed idea of how wide our hips are. And so I, I don't know if this is true for men too. We'll have to get some men on the show and see what they do with their feet in bridge pose. <laughs> but women tend to have their feet too wide compared to where their hips are. So nice alignment here from ankle, knee to hip now, which is really important for knees. And I really like now, you probably feel your inner thighs working. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, this, is, this is a great pose for building strength, probably feeling it in your buttocks too inner thighs, um, yeah, great pose, and it's a nice back bend as well, so good heart opener. Uh, this is one of my favorite poses, one of my favorite all-round poses. Great for getting into your feet as well. Okay, one more breath there. Great, okay, and you can come down, and after that, hug your knees into your chest. And so Tara doesn't have any knee issues, so the way she did that is absolutely fine. If you do have any knee issues, then hold on. Um, so you can still do knees to chest. Just hold on behind your knees. Yep. Great. And to make space for your belly, if you have, uh, if you find your belly is in the way there, then you can open your knees out wide. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Yep. So we got, we got lots of options for all shapes and sizes of bodies here too. Everybody is welcome on Namaste Yoga. <laughs> okay. So from here, you're going to roll to your side and come up to sit with your legs straight out in front of you. Now, now Tara has nice long hamstrings, so this is pretty, probably fairly easy in your body. You can sit with your back to a wall or you can sit up on a blanket so that your pelvis is lifted a little bit and that'll make that a little bit easier for you as well. And then what you're going to do is bend your right leg in. Let's say your right leg first. Great. And we're gonna leave your knee straight up to start. We're gonna do that next, yeah. And so one thing I noticed you did this before too, see how your heel is in, in further from your hip bone. So I'm gonna get you to bring it out a bit so that, that there's that same alignment from ankle to knee to hip bone. So this is really important because one of the questions I get asked a lot about is knee issues. So you wanna keep having that alignment between your ankle, hip and knee bone. So you've got your right knee bent. So you're gonna wrap your left arm around your right knee and turn towards it. Take your right hand behind you and twist towards it. So this is a nice twist. And then it's not gonna work for everybody. So some, some of you will have to take your flesh and just lift and pull it out of the way here. So you could, you could do that, yeah. And then some of you that'll still be too restrictive with breasts and, and flesh in that way. And so you could also twist the other way. So you did an open twist, keep your knee, yeah. And you could twist and do open so that there's more space for your body. So the whole point is to twist the spine and it, you can twist either way. Um, also, if you do an open twist, there's way less pressure happening. So that would be good if you had high blood pressure to do an open twist. Also good if you had headaches to do an open twist so that there's less pressure going up to your head. 
Um, also, if you're pregnant, the open twist is going to be the only option. Okay, great. Let's do that twist on the other side as well. So again, the whole nice alignment from the ankle to the knee to the hip bone. Good. And then she wrapped her right arm around her left leg, took her left hand behind her and twisted. Again, lifting and pulling flesh or, flesh or boobs, whatever is in the way, moving it out of the way. Or if it's still too restrictive and you can't breathe, then doing the open twist instead. Nice. So whatever works best in your body today. And you know, like Tara has intestinal issues. So if it was really uh, burning and uh, not a great day, then I would even recommend dropping the twist all together because it is going to create burning in her more fire in her digestive system. And really, um, probably if she's already feeling burning, she doesn't want more of that, right? <laughs> so I'm kind of shocked you actually, you, you know, that twists are... Yeah, so she says they're fine, so, uh, so she should listen to her body more than she should listen to me because she knows her body better than I do. Yeah, she's her own best teacher, and she should trust that. And same with you. You know your own body best. You should listen to you first. Yep. Doctor, you, then me. That's the hierarchy. <laughs> yeah, you even, yeah, you need to have discussions with your doctor. You probably know your own body better than your doctor. You got to communicate to your doctor. <laughs> okay. So then we're going to do the forward fold. So you're going to sit up on your blanket because this will help you roll your pelvis over your leg bones a little bit more easily. So what, a lot of th times what happens is you sit and you get this and then you try and fold forward and then nothing's happening, right? So if you get that sitting up on the, on the blanket, yeah, and you sit forward, then it allows you to roll your pelvis over your leg bones. So bend your right leg. Yep. And see how that's now hanging out in midair. So let's fill that space. Sorry, it's kind of hard. It's <laughs> probably be better to fill it with a blanket. Or how about we use the bolster? You like that bolster. I heard some feedback on that. <laughs> she liked that. It was nice and cozy. <laughs> yep. And then you're going to roll your pelvis over your leg bones. So it doesn't matter how far forward you go. You want to feel something happening on the back of your leg. That's what we're aiming for. And what I really like is that she's bent her elbows and she's kept her head back. So uh, something that might not look as good might look like this. We're reaching and really striving, making something happen. But this is, is it doesn't matter how far you get. It doesn't matter about touching your toes. It's about feeling the pose, feeling something happening on the back of your leg. So if you have any knee injuries, um, we've probably taken care of that the way we've supported that bent right knee there. Um, you could even give a little bit of, see how that left leg is hanging in midair. We could give a little bit more support to that left leg. <laughs> oh, we've already, you need another blanket. You could use this. Yes, that would be nice. So look at this. Yes, there you go. Love it. Uh, you could put a rolled up blanket underneath your left leg. Are you still getting a stretch on the back oh, of your really? leg? Yeah, it's too high. Felt really relaxing. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. And then it becomes less of a straight leg forward fold. Uh, it's quite nice too. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then your legs fully support it. Okay, shall we switch sides? You can go off the, yeah. So let's support that knee hanging in the air over there. And then we'll support the, the leg that's, that leg's kind of hanging in. Okay, so then lift up tall through your spine. Roll your pelvis over your leg bones. So that's the action of what takes you forward. Yeah, that's where the movement happens. And you want to feel something happening on the back of your 
leg. That's where you're feeling something happening. Breathing in and out through your nose. And then slowly roll your pelvis to come back up to seated. And we're going to finish by doing Shavasana again, lying on your back. But I want to show a modification in case you're pregnant and you can't lie on your back, which would be to lie on your side. So you could use that as a pillow. Yep, so that would be what you would do. And let's just use this. You could use one, you could do one leg, yeah, that, nice. That would be really nice if you were pregnant. And then everybody else is going to, do you want to do that or do you want to lie on your back? I'll lie on my back. Okay. <laughs> everybody else is going to lie on their back. I do like putting something underneath your knees. It gives a really nice energy flow at the end of the class. Tara and I both go to the same yoga teacher here and and she recommends it for good energy flow through the body. So if you imagine a river flowing, it's kind of curvy lines, not straight lines. So it's very relaxing. And also, if you have any back issues, it just takes that whole low back thing out of the equation. So this is your time to relax. It's a really important part of the class because it allows your body to receive everything that you've done and to integrate everything that you've done. And the way that we usually finish our classes here um, in this part of the class is I usually read a, a short reading or a poem. And if it resonates with you, then great. You can let it drop in. And if it doesn't, makes sense to you or it doesn't resonate with you, then you can just let it go. So today I have a poem for you by Donna Faltz. It's a little bit more of a reading. <laughs> this is what I have to say to you. You know all that you need to know. You already are all that you need to be. It remains only for you to recognize and acknowledge who you are, what you know, and the powerful presence that is awake within you. You think of yourself as fragile, but you are in fact strong. You sometimes feel alone, but you are in truth connected to spirit, to all beings. Believe in this connection. Believe in yourself. That is all you need to do for all as well. Okay, so to come out of Shavasana, to come out of your corpse pose, You'll bend your knees. Roll to your right side and pause for a moment. And then make your way up to seated. So thank you so much for joining us for this absolute beginner class. If you like today's show, then give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share it with a friend who you think might like to try yoga. If you know a friend or a coworker or a family member, then be sure to share it with them. Today's question to answer in the comments is, were today's instructions clear enough for you? Did you find that today's class easy to follow? If so, 
we have over 20 other beginner yoga classes for you to try out for free. And I'll link to those in the show notes. And if you want to go even deeper and you're ready to take the plunge, we have a membership site too, and you can subscribe to that here below. So thank you so much for joining us from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. May you be as strong as our mountains and may you be as rooted as the trees in our forest. And thank you, Tara, so much for being with us. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.